How do you fancy exploring watercolour on synthetic paper UPO? Well, that's what we're going to do this week because last week I was using it with Distress Oxides and you know what, I haven't used this paper for a while up until that point so I thought it'd be fun to revisit this product and share some techniques for using it with watercolour. So let's dive straight in and the first technique I'm using is wet on wet. So I've put down a little bit of water in a circle shape and I'm just going to drop the colour into it. And we can watch that pigment move and the shapes and textures that it makes. It's something like mesmerising about watching pigment moving through water, isn't there? This yellow that I'm using is actually an iridescent. The camera can't pick up the sparkle from this angle, but I will show you the sparkle later on once it's dry. And you can see how that looks on Yupo. So a fun thing to try, and what I'm doing here, is blowing through a straw onto that wet paint and watching it move over the surface. The surface is super smooth and non-absorbent because Yupo is made out of polypropylene so you can get a lot more movement of the liquid and the paint on that surface for some really fun effects. I can also use the fact that as the water is pulled because I was holding the paper up I can add more colour to those areas. So next I'm just going to add the colour straight to the dry surface. It has a totally different feel to it than adding it to normal paper. You feel much more like you're pushing the pigment around on the surface, whereas normal paper, you've got that more sort of, it sinks into the paper feel to it. So you can keep on working the pigment on the surface even when the watercolour paint is dry, as you can add water to it or more paint to it and it will react and move around again. So this is something to keep in mind if you're trying to layer up, as you'll see later. Some products will also wipe clean off Yupo, whereas other products will stain. So it's worth experimenting with what you've got to see what it does. You can draw on Yupo with pencils or pens, you can also use acrylics on it. And I've got a couple of tutorials with some step-by-step -step projects using different products and you can find a link to them in the cards and the description below. One of them shares a resist technique that you can use with watercolour or alcohol ink. And the other is how to make galaxy art on Yupo with acrylic paint. So have fun with those projects as well. Now I'm using Prima Marketing watercolours for my project as I really like the colours in this set and I wanted to try that iridescent yellow and see how that looked. But you can use any watercolour paints that you might have. I'm also using Indian ink which is a lovely drawing ink. If you're in the US I think you guys call it India ink. So I'm going to apply my Indian ink with a brush and my surface is mostly dry. It took a while to dry, a good few hours, and I let it dry naturally rather than using a heat tool. Now you can use a heat tool on Yupo, but you need to be very careful not to overheat the surface as it will warp if it gets too hot. The nice thing about the Indian ink is that it just sits on top of that watercolour layer as the watercolour layer is dry and it's not mixing with them or dislodging them. Now if I tried to use more watercolour paint over the top then it would have mixed with the layers underneath and you'll see that in a minute. But what do you think? Will you try Yupo or other synthetic papers? Um, have you tried them already? What have you been using them with? I would love to hear, so leave me all your comments and just let me know. I hope that this project has inspired you, plus there's other two projects that you can go and visit as well. And if you are finding this video useful to you, then please do like it, share it with your friends, and of course, if you're not one of my subscribers, subscribe to my channel. It'd be great to have you on board. I've got lots of art and craft, tips, tricks and inspiration videos for you to watch. And of course, let me know if there's something particular you'd like to have covered as I'm always happy to take on video suggestions, so just leave me a comment. Now, the more I'm working on this Indian ink layer, the more I feel that the black shapes are just not working. They're too disjointed from that background, and it's not harmonising or resonating with me. I experiment a little to try and regain that balance, but it, it's just not happening, and I'm liking it less and less. So it's time to be bold and change it up a bit. So I'm going back to that iridescent paint and using it to add my bold shapes to this piece. Now the Indian ink is mostly dry, so it isn't really mixing with the paint, but where it is still slightly wet, it is breaking up a little bit and adding more texture. The blue paint, however, underneath, it is reacting with the water and mixing with the yellow to give a green colour shift. But it looks almost patina-like, so only adds to the effect. I have to admit that I'm still not sure if I like where this piece is going. I'm at that stage in the creation where I'm thinking this could just be a complete mess. 
all creations seem to go through this kind of stage. Some of them turn into pieces that you're happy with and others just remain messes. But you kind of have to work through to discover which it will be and to learn from it. Even the messes are important learning tools and you can always park them and come back to them at a different time to rework them or cover them up. So never give up and keep on going. You're either going to save it or you're going to park it for another time. I really like the texture that you get when mixing Indian ink with that iridescent paint on the Yupo surface. So I'm adding more of both and letting them mix naturally to get that texture. And you can see how I'm getting bolder and bolder with those shapes as well. You can also see how the paint pools nicely and sits on that Yupo surface. So I'm going to let it dry in those pools rather than try and spread it around too thinly. And you'll just have areas there of saturated colour. Now it's just a case of letting that layer dry completely before adding to it. And once that layer is dry, I, I think you can see it, it's, the sparkle is much more visible and you get that gold effect of the iridescent yellow. Now I will show you a close up in a minute so you can see all of the textures and you can see that metallic look in more detail. To finish up this piece, I'm adding in those Indian shapes again. Now this time, that textured gold layer acts as an anchor to the shapes and the whole piece looks much more grounded and harmonious. But if you want to do your own direct compare and contrast, go back to around 4 minutes 10 and see what you think. But don't forget to come back to see the texture and the metallic finish on the Yupo. So as promised, here is a closer look and you can see the metallic sheen of the iridescent paint and the interesting texture that you get when you mix it with Indian ink plus the texture you get with the Yupo when using different watercolour techniques such as the wet on wet and the wet on dry techniques. Let me know how you get on and do link me up to anything you do on social media and all my links are below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video and I'll see you all again next time with some more art inspiration tips and tricks. Thanks for watching, bye!